Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing something very different from my norm. We are ditching the neutral boho -y modern organic decor that I know and love and we are going to embrace color. I can't believe we are actually in June right now. Like it feels crazy that we are in summer and with the new season, I want to add color to my house. Lately, I've been decorating and buying a lot of neutral decor exhibit A behind me. And the most color I have in my house is is obviously green because you guys know I love green and then I also have a lot of blues around the house especially in the basement that is probably the most colorful area in the house but we are going full-on rainbow today so lots of bright pops of color hello so I'm making colorful DIYs today. Are we? Yeah. I can make one of my face. What if we did make one of your face? <laughs> okay, as I was saying, I just want to spice things up around here, but my biggest fear is that with adding color, sometimes I feel like it could be too overpowering or look a little bit tacky. I want to figure out how to do this and how to incorporate it with my existing decor so that it'll actually mesh together seamlessly. We will see how that goes. I have a few ideas, but I'm going to gather some more inspiration and we can jump right into the project. I also want to thank Ritual for sponsoring today's video, but I will talk a little bit more about them later. For this first project, I went onto Pinterest and I basically typed in painted dresser and I saw this photo, which I totally thought was a full size dresser, but looking at it closer, it actually is a jewelry box. So it's a lot smaller in size. I don't know why, but something really drew me to this. I think it's just the contrast between how bright the colors are and then against the natural wood tones. It just looks so beautiful. And I just love the idea of having a teeny tiny little piece of furniture on a dresser or something like that. So I went onto Facebook Marketplace to try to look for something similar. And you guys, you will not believe what I found on there. Look at this. It is almost identical to the one that I found and I honestly just cannot believe this was listed. It's only 12 bucks. It even has a little ring holder right here. So I messaged the seller. She said that I can pick it up today and I am so excited to give this a little makeover. I feel like I was meant to do this project because what are the odds that I found this the same exact day that I saw that photo? I honestly can't believe I found this. I'm so excited for this project. Let's go grab it and make it over. I got it. I almost broke it though. Yay! It's so cute! It's like a mini drawer. <laughs> Is it cheating if I use these? I'll just put these in just in case. Okay, I'm looking for a yellow tile, but it's honestly very hard to find any yellow. I really cannot believe that I found this on Facebook Marketplace. I am so excited about it because it actually is in great condition. Usually when I find things on Facebook Marketplace, it looks great online and then when I get it, it has like spider webs everywhere, it's really dirty, and it also usually smells bad. So this actually is in great condition. Everything is working, it doesn't smell bad, it is not super dusty, so I'm very excited that I have a decent starting point. I just love the little legs on here and I also really like these little handles as well. The inside is lined with felt and there's even a little ring holder one so this is super functional. I'm very very happy about this find you guys. As you can tell this is very orange so the first plan of attack is to strip the wood and then try to get it to more of a neutral tone. I want to preserve it as best as I can so I'm going to do the whole outside. I'm going to do the fronts of the drawers. I'm going to leave the sides the color that they are because no one's really going to see that anyways and then this door is going to be a little bit tricky to strip but we just need some tape and we can get it done ah, i'm so excited One alternative to using a paint stripper is just to sand it off, but personally, I just prefer to do less sanding, plus the process of paint stripping is just more satisfying to me. The paint stripper claims to work after just 30 minutes, but I always leave it on for at least a few hours or even overnight. Just make sure that you wrap it up to keep anything from drying out. 
you definitely have to be a little bit more careful stripping this because it is so detailed. Also, if you're working with this, make sure that you wear safety goggles because if you're like me and you're clumsy, you are bound to perhaps get it into your eyeballs, which is not good. These teeny tiny little drawers. to thank Ritual for sponsoring today's video. I've been using Ritual over the past year now and I've been absolutely loving it. Every morning I take the Essential for Women 18 Plus as well as the Symbiotic Plus from Ritual and I actually just got this little pill organizer which is super cute. It allows me to prep everything for the week and also just looks very aesthetic. So in each one I have one of their multivitamin and then two of the Symbiotics. Even though I try my best to take it in the morning, sometimes I forget and that is totally okay because with Ritual you can actually take them at any time you want with or without a meal. So here's what one of the capsules look like and it basically is a delayed release capsule meaning that it dissolves later on and I learned that your stomach acid actually can impact the vitamins and minerals that you're getting. So with this I don't have to worry about it. As I'm getting older and getting into a new decade I just want to keep my body as healthy as possible so that I can DIY for as long as possible. So this is just an easy way to take care of myself and I love that it is a subscription so it shows up at my doorstep every single month and if you want to try out Ritual they gave me a 20% off code off of your first month so make sure to use the code at checkout and use my link below. To remove the excess paint stripper I made sure to use mineral spirits and I usually use steel wool or a brass brush to get into all the little nooks and crannies. This one was super intricate to do because it was on such a small scale but I tried to get as much as I could off and then I just sanded it down on any of the more stubborn areas. And luckily the wood tone of this ended up being perfect. I had plans to stain it if it wasn't a good color, but I'm absolutely loving how this is looking. And I know that wood does count as a neutral, but I wanted to share this project as a way to dress up your neutrals with some color. Um, okay, how do I fix this? Okay, so it turns out that this part of the door is like not real wood. It looks like they use veneer or some type of like wallpaper because it's very thin on here. So I guess I'll take it off and we will see how bad this is. It's literally paper. I am finally ready to actually draw in the drawers, so I obviously had to sketch it on Procreate. I probably went a little bit overboard because I did not need to go into this detail when it's not even the real thing, but here is what I'm thinking. These colors are very much inspired by this hanging pot of flowers that I have. The main colors in it are yellow, pink, and blue, and it just makes me so happy every time I look at it, so I thought it would do the same thing if I looked at this dresser. It would probably make me really happy looking at these colors all the time. So that's kind of what I went with and I thought I would just use my paint markers for this. I love these markers so much. If you guys don't already have some, you definitely need them because they just work so well. I have this box that's more like pastel colors, which I think are gorgeous and they work on all types of materials. So you could use it on glass, ceramic, porcelain, wood, stone, paper. I really love these, so if you're looking for something similar, I will link those below. Okay, let's get started. I went straight into painting this without really mapping anything out because I didn't want it to look too perfect. I wanted it to feel handmade because it basically is, and if you do end up making any mistakes, you can just let the paint dry and just erase it off by sanding it. And before anyone gets mad at me for painting a quote unquote vintage piece, this did have a made in China sticker at the bottom, so it's definitely not a vintage piece at all. I also found a few of these online so I will link them below for you if you want to create something similar to this project. You guys know me and you know that I tend to stick to the same colors when it comes to my DIYs so using bright colors like blue and pink and purple is definitely challenging me to branch outside of my comfort zone. 
I feel like when you have a certain style, everything that isn't that specific style, you tend to stray away from, and I really don't want that to limit me on what I create and decorate in my home. I like to think that all artwork and styles are beautiful, so it would be a shame not to try something different just because it's not within my usual style. But don't get me wrong, having a personal style is great because it gives you an internal compass of what you like and don't like, but don't let it put yourself into a box because if you love something, you should be able to experiment with it and see how you can make it work for your own style. Oh my god, this is so heavy! Okay, I have all the supplies here for this first project. I ended up getting the flower tiles because I honestly just really love how they look, so I'm going to use that for my main floral pattern. Then I ended up grabbing this, which is basically little rectangle pieces. I want to use that for the initial that I want to put on here, and I also thought this would be perfect to use as a border, so that is going to be perfect. I also picked up a tile nipper, which I already have, but this one is a little bit different. This is the one that I saw from the Instagram account, so I think this might be the better option for this project, so we will see. Got a little float, some glue, and then all the rest of the tiles, which I really hope I got enough of. And if there's too much, I can always return it. Look at this gorgeous green tile. Maybe one day I will tile my whole bathroom with this color because it's so beautiful. Oh my god, all of these colors make me so happy to look at. Wait, where did I just put the scissors? Okay. For this project, I'm just using a wood round and I already had one on hand and it's like literally the perfect size. So I'm gonna get started with that. What I want to do is figure out if I can just use the outermost part here and use it for, oh my god, guys, do you see that? It literally is like a perfect fit. Can you see that? It is perfect, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to cut out the outermost edge first, and then I'm going to work on the initial. here so I'm just gonna place it right on top and then clamp down just like that oh there we go So now I'm going to take my green tiles and I'm going to try to make like blades of grass and leaf looking shapes. This definitely is going to take a little bit of practice. So let me try. I'm just going to do it right here and see what happens. Ah! Ooh, okay. We have a straight edge. Ooh, this is a really good shape. That looks like a leaf, okay. I'm gonna cut this down more, but look at how perfectly this curve fits the leaf. Like that is pretty perfect. Now the tricky part is gonna be to try to round it out a little bit. What's great about this project is like, you don't have to make anything look super perfect. It's supposed to look organic and messy and jagged. And you can kind of just keep going at it until you get a shape that you like. And I feel like if you wanted to, you could probably sand this down a little bit to smooth things out if there's like one little area you can't get to.
I was super focused on this, but I was having so much fun because it felt like I was putting together a puzzle, but I was the one creating the shapes and figuring out how it all fit together to make a beautiful picture. And I honestly can see myself creating more mosaics in the future because I just enjoyed this so much. I would 10 out of 10 recommend this if you haven't tried it before. This also took a lot of time and patience, so it could definitely be done in over a weekend. And after I did the dry fit, I just used an adhesive to put everything into place. I'm using this Gorilla Glue that I got in a tube, but you could definitely use something like E6000 or any other type of heavy duty glue. I would also recommend using a glue that doesn't dry down too quickly. That way you have a little bit of play time to kind of place everything as you see fit. Because once I took off one of the pieces, it was kind of hard to figure out where it fit back into the mosaic. So having a slow drying glue definitely helped here. It is the next day now and this is completely dry so we are just about ready to grout. For my first time making a mosaic, I am pretty happy with the overall layout and how everything is kind of placed. There's a lot of white going on so I definitely plan to add some yellow to this after I grout it and I think that will really bring this to life. I let it sit overnight to dry down completely and then I went right into the grout and I basically just used whatever I had left over which is a warm gray color. I opted to use this versus a white because I thought it would just help bring out the colors more and kind of serve as an outline for the flowers and the leaves and of course the monogram. And if you find that it's a little bit hard to take off the grout on the actual tile after wiping it off, I would definitely recommend getting a grout dehazer. That is going to really help make the colors pop. And like I said, I wanted this to be very colorful, but those white petals just weren't doing it for me, so I ended up painting them a beautiful yellow. I thought that this would just complement the colors well, and of course, you don't have to do this if you have the exact colors that you want, but I'm gonna fake it, and it turned out totally fine. So if you go to the tile store and you can't find the exact color that you're looking for, this paint method is definitely a great trick to try. You can go ahead and add some hardware onto the back, and now this is ready to be hung and displayed. guys for this next project we are attempting squeegee art which i'm equally excited and also very nervous about you guys might have seen this viral video by an account called sheree studios they make amazing abstract art it's definitely one of those things that looks super easy because all they're using is a squeegee but you know that it takes a lot of time to actually master something like this so much so that i read the comment under this video and some people are saying that it's fake and that it's ai but others in the comments are saying that you're able to achieve this depending on the paint, the paper, and also the dry times of everything. So I'm going to give this a try and see if we can create a beautiful piece. I have all of my paints over here. I also grabbed some squeegees. And I have a bunch of different papers as well as this oval canvas, which I thought would be fun to do like our final piece after we kind of perfect the technique. So we will see if we're able to create something similar and I will definitely share what I have learned trying to attempt this. So first I'm gonna try this on some cardstock just because it's a smoother paper and I won't have to waste a lot of my good paper. So we will try this first. Usually when I work on an art piece, I kind of stick to just a few colors that are kind of complementary to each other. But for this piece, we are using all the colors of the rainbow. So I have a bunch that I just bought. For example, this lime green color I would usually never use in my decor, but I thought it'd be fun for this. First, I'm gonna try the checkerboard look that they did, and I'm just gonna do it straight out of the bottle. I'm not sure if that's how they do it, but we're gonna try it. We'll just do one little drop at a time. And you basically just want to alternate. <laughs> You guys see that they're already starting to form one single thing so I don't know how well this is gonna work. Okay this already looks way too thick. I'm gonna let it sit and then we will use the squeegee and see what we get. Okay, we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna put a piece of paper underneath here so that I can pull it. And I already know this little area right here is messed up because 
I forgot to like shake it, so it's very watery right here. Ah, why am I so nervous? Let's just go for it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's not great. <laughs> I think that this is way too watery, the paint that I'm using for the black and white. Honestly, I really like these colors together, so I'm gonna try this again. This just looks like a mess, you guys. Ta-da! How's it going, champ? Not good! Why? Well, because I'm practicing. I, I just dropped some paint over there. Oh, I see it. Where is it? It's, Can you get it? It's there, all right. Look at this! <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. I'm determined to master this. I tried and tried and tried, but I was just not getting the same look as that original inspo. But I was having a lot of fun with it, and I loved experimenting with what I could create with the current skill level that I just acquired. And just doing this project was a huge lesson for me to create something that I was happy with, even if it diverts from what I originally intended to make. And honestly, that's just how DIY goes sometimes. And take it from me as someone who DIYs as a living now sometimes you just can't get it perfect but as long as you're happy with it that's all that matters okay let's i believe in you <laughs> yeah, let's see that's honestly way better feels good right ta-da it's a bunch of little figures what <laughs> i still can't get this checkerboard you guys why is it so difficult i feel a little bit better about this so i'm gonna use some nicer paper and i think that'll give us a better result because this paper really is absorbing the paint and if you look really closely you can see kind of like an outline of each of the little blobs which i don't really want so i'm going to try to sort that out from this to this though that's a big improvement i think Okay, take three. Mm, not bad. I really like this color combination, but I still can't get the checkerboard right. Uh. So I saw someone attempt to do a starry night with this technique, so I'm gonna try it because it's actually Brian's like favorite painting. So I'm gonna take some blues and yellows and orangey colors and let's see what we can make. <laughs> more like the scream painting than anything else. I made something for you. Whoa, what is that? <laughs> what is that? You can't tell. Is that fire? It's starry night. Oh. <laughs> it just looks like night. Night? Yeah. <laughs> After many, many test pieces, I've decided that I'm probably not gonna master this in just one afternoon. So instead, I'm going to dumb it down and make something that I still love, but also that's a little bit more achievable. This really does show that as easy as it looks online, it is a lot harder to do. And that's why artists should always be paid fairly because even though it might take them 15 minutes to do something, it takes them hours of trial and error before they can perfect it. So I realized the reason why I really love how this piece turned out was because it really reminded me of the limestone mountains in Ha Long Bay. I recently got to see these beautiful mountains in person on our trip to Vietnam and it was so magical. It felt really surreal and now every time I look at this piece it's going to remind me of that trip which I think is so special. I 
feel so much more inspired after doing these projects. It makes me so happy just seeing more color like this piece right behind me. I honestly can't choose a favorite between the three. Like I really love this piece because it taught me a big lesson and I just love how it turned out. But I also can't get over how cute the dresser turned out and the mosaic also it just came out so beautifully. But let me know in the comments and vote on which one was your favorite project from today. I really hope that it inspires you to create something new and if you like this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up below. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram for more behind the scenes and updates every single day and that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I will see you in the next one. Bye!